Have you ever wanted to meet one of your favorite cartoon characters in real life? I know I have. But what would their fantastical animated designs look like if they were brought into the real world? To get a better idea, I had my intern, um, what's his name? Oh yeah, George, run some prompts through Midjourney, an AI art machine capable of taking images and adjusting them through a series of prompts. But some of these reimaginings haven't turned out as uh, cute as I'd hoped. With that, say goodbye to your pure childhood memories as we take a look at some realistic versions of your favorite cartoon characters. Despicable You. Back in 2010, the animated film Despicable Me took the world by storm, and while everyone liked the human cast, it was the banana yellow minions that stole the show. People adored their smooth yellow shape and great big goggles, but let's see what you think of them after they've been through the mid-journey machine. Oh, Kevin, Stewart, and Bob look like they're having a bad day. And <laughs> an even worse life. What the heck happened? Well, according to the movie's lore, these particular three minions have been slaving away for Gru since 1968. The supervillain would now be in his late 50s, at least we can assume from the balding. So in reality, after 50 years toiling away day after day in a basement, the minion's skin is wrinkled, their teeth are missing, and their eyesight has deteriorated to the point they need super thick glasses. Because by reality's laws, these minions are old. Gru, on the other hand, looks pretty good for his age, probably because he's never had to work a day in his life. Feeling Swine Do you know Peppa Pig? I imagine most of you do. After all, this British children's show has been around since 2004. Toddlers love this piggish tune, following the preppy pink anthropomorphic pig and her family through all sorts of adventures. Although maybe youngsters wouldn't be quite so keen on Peppa if they knew what she looked like in real life. Oh, don't sneak up on me like that. In the show, her features are only ever seen on one side of her face, which in reality makes for quite a peculiar looking poor sign. To make things worse, she's also taken a rather feral turn. I guess Midjourney imagined her as more of a wild hog. Well, in the show, there aren't many humans in Peppa's world. Without farmers to raise and breed them, wild pigs would be the norm, and they'd need some defensive features, such as hardened lumps on their snouts, just like a warthog. Can't say that dress is doing Peppa any favors, though. <laughs> She'd probably benefit from a bit more coverage, like a paper bag over her head. Okay, perhaps I'm being a little pig-headed. Old Yellow. Which icon embodies the spirit of America more than any other? The bald eagle? The Statue of Liberty? The Star Spangled Banner? Nope, it's Homer Simpson of the Simpsons cartoon fame. The beer-swelling, TV-binging, junk food-gobbling bonehead is an undisputed icon of the USA. Beloved by fans and critics alike, Homer is undoubtedly one of the greatest cartoon characters of all time. Whoa! Let's just see how popular he is if we turn this everyman into a real man. Dope! In reality, Homer's even less attractive than his animation. But this wasn't made in Midjourney. No, this creepy creation comes straight from the brain of Miguel Vasquez, a digital artist who specializes in turning your childhood favorites into realistically unsettling freaks of nature. You can see how Vasquez brilliantly captured Homer's horrifyingly bulbous eyes, which is a feature I've genuinely never thought twice about until right now. And is Homer laughing or choking here? I genuinely can't tell. To create these, Miguel paid close attention to the character's cartoonish features, such as his tube-like head, bulging colorless eyes, and unnaturally wide, beak-like mouth. Maybe that's why Homer struggles to chew those delicious donuts. Mmm, donuts. <laughs> Feel the burns. Evil tycoons are everywhere, and before you rush to the comment section, I'm not naming names. Any real names, anyway. I'm talking about the Simpsons' own Springfield power plant owner, Charles Montgomery Burns. With his age set somewhere between 81 and 120, the most realistic version of this cartoon would just be a haggard corpse in a suit. But let's see what Midjourney thinks. Huh, it seems Midjourney agrees with me. 
To bring out every liver-spotted detail, George drew prompt inspiration from this grotesquely glorious costume by Nelson Cooper. Since the cartoon series often makes reference to Mr. Burns' demonic connections, this realistic Monty has an undead appeal. Hence why his eyes are so dramatically sunken into his head, and with the muscles in his face atrophying unnaturally over the prolonged years, it really brings out all the sharp angles of his skull. No wonder Homer is so scared of entering his office. When originally designing the evil oligarch's appearance, Simpson creators were inspired by Fox Corporation founder Barry Diller, whom they then crossed with a praying mantis. No wonder realistic Mr. Burns looks like he devours small insects. Enter the Voidberg. Matt Groening is arguably most well-known for creating The Simpsons, but his signature style doesn't stop at Springfield. His other famous series, Futurama, first aired back in 1999 and is full of silly escapades and kooky characters. None more so than Dr. John Zoidberg, the disgusting yet lovable crustacean physician. Now, I don't know what would be worse than being treated by Dr. Zoidberg other than being treated by his realistic counterpart. <coughs> Oh my god! George wanted to give some authenticity to a realistic Zoid, so he used props for some real-life sea creatures like cuttlefish and lobster into the mid-journey machine. To really bring out the horror, he added some prompts in based around the Ood, uh, tentacle-faced alien species from the world of Doctor Who. You can certainly see the tentacled resemblance between these guys. Being a mutated chimera of sea and space creatures, I can't imagine this slimy-looking alien has the best bedside manner. I don't know whether he'd prefer to treat me or eat me. I'm Rickle Pick! Unless you've been living in a cave for the past 10 years, then you've probably heard of Rick and Morty, the nihilist sci-fi comedy that's got its fair share of, let's call them very dedicated fans. Unsurprisingly, George is also one of these types of people. Kinda makes sense considering all the stuff he's been putting out here today. George was inspired by the episode where Rick transforms himself into a preserved cucumber. You know, Pickle Rick. Let's transfer it to reality, shall we? Oh, God. Well, I don't know what I expected. How did we even get here? Well, the original cartoon character design of Rick Sanchez was based on Doc Brown from the Back to the Future series. Working with this information, George combined this with the prompts Pickle with Ugly Old Man Face. <laughs> Makes sense. But why are his teeth so round? In fact, how does this pickle close its mouth considering how wonky its gums and jaws are? God, and its eyes. It's weirdly piercing bulbous blue eyes. It's like they're piercing into my soul, Morty. <laughs> Ooh la la. Ever since it began airing way back in 2010, I've longed to live in the world of Adventure Time. Pendleton Ward's quirky cartoon follows the wacky adventures of heroes Finn the Human and Jake the Dog in the land of Ooh. It'd be a blast visiting the Candy Kingdom, battling evil monsters and rescuing damsels in distress. That is, as long as I didn't have to meet Finn in real life. Oh my glob! Ward's simplistic designs don't really lend themselves to noses, which is fine in cartoon form, but not in real life. Who is a post-apocalyptic society born out of nuclear destruction and nearly all the characters are mutants. Finn, although still human, is no exception, which explains his lack of snaz and his wide-set, far-apart eyes. You might also notice his nasty gnashers. In the cartoons, Finn has an acute fear of the dentist, so it'd be no surprise if all those trips to the Candy Kingdom had totally rotted his teeth. <laughs> what do you think, Jake? You disgust. Disgusting, disgusting creature. I agree. Oh boy, do I agree. Calamity. Back in 1999, former marine biologist Steven Hillenberg created a TV series that would go on to shape some of our earliest memories. SpongeBob SquarePants. It follows the cartoon life of the adorable, animate, big-eyed, pant-wearing sea sponge, or Bob and all his friends at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, George, I think I'm ready. Show me what Midjourney thinks he looks like. Oh, God, no, no, turns out I wasn't ready. Those eyes, those giant lidless eyes. So they might not actually be lidless. Many creatures that live in the sea have nictitating membrane instead of eyelids, which are translucent, allowing them to maintain vision in the murky depths. Many others, like fish, don't have anything to protect their eyes at all. 
So no wonder SpongeBob's real eyes are so uncovered. The unnaturally deeply pockmarked yellow sponge skin of his face and painful looking buck teeth don't feel cute anymore. Just horrifying. But George wasn't happy to ruin just one character from this childhood favorite franchise, oh no. Patrick the Starfish, or Sea Star, which is a more accurate name for the species since they're not actually fish, got the same mid-journey makeover and, oh dear Neptune, it's really captured the knobby, bony, calcified skin of the real-life starfish on Patrick's stomach, along with his wide, toothless mouth. When these real-life counterparts are put side by side, these two look less like a pair of adorable best friends and more like a reason to stay out of the ocean forever. Mousetrap. When I say Disney, there's one big-eared cartoon character that immediately springs to mind. Yep, the one and only Mickey Mouse. But I've gotta be honest, I don't really see a mouse in Mickey's design. Sure, he's got big round ears and a tail, but he's smooth. Don't mice have fur? And his eyes are on the front of his face. Normal mice have eyes on the sides of their heads as they're prey animals, and this placement gives them a better field of vision to watch for predators. So with forward-facing eyes, this means Mickey's a predator? No, that can't be right. Hey, George, let's see if Midjourney can give us a more realistic look at this beloved mask. Oh, <laughs> oh, I immediately regret asking for this. I mean, I got the fur I asked for, but the grayish lumpy flesh and those giant bumpy ears feel very wrong. And while that's more anatomically accurate to a mouse, this mouse's eyes, while sunken into his face, are still facing forward, so... Despite his unsettling, dark, toothless smile, this mouth is still technically a predator. Yeah, that's okay. I never wanted to go to Disney World anyway. Hip Hop If you thought I was only going to destroy your pure and wholesome image of Disney, don't worry. Warner Brothers, you're next. Bugs Bunny, the carrot-chopping wise guy, has been an icon of Warner since his initial success in the 1940s. For this one, George decided to imagine Bugs as if his proportions were translated to a bipedal human-like form. What would that look like? See for yourself. My God! George, what did you feed into Midjourney? Pure nightmare fuel? If you're a fan of the horror game Five Nights at Freddy's, don't you think this thing wouldn't look out of place at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? It's not all that awful for the most part, but when you focus in on that mouth and the disturbingly crooked, uneven teeth paired with the wide yellow eyes, and the fact that this thing stands up like a human, yeah, my instinct is telling me to run. Sorry, Bugs, but I'm out of here. M -m 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 -mo. If I could visit any place from the land of fiction, do you know where I'd go? Literally anywhere except Moe's Tavern from The Simpsons. Even in cartoon form, I can tell that place is an absolute dive. But how would Springfield's bad-tempered, hard-nosed barkeep Mo Sizlak look in real life? Oh, 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 I thought the cartoon version was ugly. How did George create this lifelike Mo? For starters, if you've seen other realistic versions of the character, you might notice a resemblance to American comedian Rich Hall. It's not a coincidence. The equally acerbic Hall is said to be the real-life inspiration behind Moe's character, a claim Hall proudly supports given he used to work alongside Simpsons writer George Meyer. You know, I wouldn't be too pleased if I'd inspired an unattractive pervert. That's not the only inspiration, though. It turns out that Simpsons designers also based Moe's appearance on a gorilla. So when George added some apish prompts into Midjourney, it resulted in this grayish skin, the super high snub nose, and long, expressive mouth. Well, if there's another sequel planned for the Planet of the Apes, we know who to call. Got the runs. Who's the fastest character of them all? Why, Sonic the Hedgehog, of course. The spiky sprinter was developed by video game company Sega to compete with Nintendo's Mario character. Since then, Sonic has become an icon with his own line of video games, multiple TV series, and a film franchise. Speaking of which, if that viral, creepy Sonic design from the first live-action film trailer didn't freak you out, allow George and I to have another go. Dang! <laughs> I wish the blue blur was blurred. How come he looks even more unsettling? Well, have you ever noticed that Cartoon Sonic doesn't have two separate eyes? He's just got one big, conjoined eye with a low-dipped forehead which gives him his expressions? Also, Sonic's mouth is on just one side of his face. This is actually common for characters in classic Japanese manga and anime character design, 
as it gives them a more in-depth side profile. The conjoined eye and side mouth don't seem out of place on a 2D character, but in real life, gotta go fast. Fast away from this thing! Extra drowsy. The world of Pokemon is full of cute and funny creatures. I bet they're even better in real life. The designs are all adorable, like Pikachu to Snorlax. What could possibly be horrifying about- Oh, jeez! I forgot about Hypno. Yes, everyone's least favorite creep. In the Pokemon world, Hypnos mesmerize humans with their swinging pendant, lull them to sleep, and then feast on their dreams. Nice. To create this sleep-snatching monster, George made a base image of a monkey sneaking into a bedroom. Hmm, I think me and that intern need to have some words. From this, he added those foxy ears, a lion's mane, yellow skin, eerie eyes, and most importantly, that big old nose. The Hypno's elephant-like trunk is inspired by Bakketh, a dream-eating spirit in Japanese mythology. Bakketh, in turn, are inspired by Taper, the large herbivorous mammals native to Southeast Asia and South America. That'd almost be sweet if the resulting image wasn't this horrific thing crawling into your bedroom. Charlie Frown. Good grief, what's next? Why, it's Peanuts by illustrator Charles M. Scholes. This comic book ran from 1950 to 2000 and is considered a cartoon classic, inspiring the likes of Garfield, Calvin and Hobbes, and even Matt Groening's early comic, Life in Hell. Schultz's simple but distinctive style left his cartoon kids with massive heads and tiny black eyes. Also, Schultz left the hero of the stories, Charlie Brown, practically bald. So all in all, I'm sure a realistic Charlie will look just fine. I was wrong. If they ever want to make another Peanuts Halloween special, then that's a design that'll definitely give kids the creeps. To create this nightmare fuel, George Frankenstein together this image of a little boy with an unusual hairstyle and then altered his face into this eyesore to make him resemble the cartoon Charlie. After seeing that mess, I think I'm going to need at least five cents worth of psychiatric help. Psycho Swamp I'm afraid it's not Ogre yet. And from that pun, you can probably guess which animated childhood favorite is going to be desecrated next. Shrek first farted onto our screens in 2001 and has since become king of the memes. But George wanted to create a more typical ogre like the evil, ugly, brutish ogres you read about in classic fairy tales. What would Shrek look like as one of them? Well, mm -hmm. the world has certainly ruled this onion-guzzling ogre. All that time wallowing in swamp muck has caused mushrooms to sprout over his slowly rotting body. Shrek's often described in film as hideous and stinky, so it makes sense that these traits would worsen as he continued his sickly, solitary life. Given Shrek's affinity for filth, muck, and meat, George decided to blend him with Nurgle, the god of decay from the Warhammer universe. The result is a hulking, green-skinned nightmare with pointed teeth and small, orange eyes. <laughs> I won't even mention what George did to Donkey. Tickle your fancy. The iconic Mr. Men and Little Miss books have been delighting children and adults alike since 1971 when Roger Hargreaves wrote and illustrated the very first character in the series, Mr. Tickle. The hero of the strange story has extraordinary long arms that he uses to tickle everyone he sees. Hmm, those characters should really call the police. Inspired by this unsettling tale, intern George decided to bring this wacko with wandering hands to our world. Why am I not surprised, George? Many of Hargreaves' characters have no discernible features to speak of, such as joints, noses, or ears, which is why the real Mr. Tickle looks like a round glob of flesh with two fleshy tentacles for arms. Instead of a comforting kid's character with its rotund body, long arms, and big black eyes, this thing looks more like a weirdly fleshy spider. And with that, we can add tickling to my list of phobias as well. Great. Middle of nowhere. Whenever I need a dose of nostalgia, I turn to the only thing that gives my life meaning. Children's television. Nothing quite hits the spot like Courage the Cowardly Dog. The show about a pink pup living in a spooky old house has become an internet fan favorite for its dark humor, bizarre imagery, and odd vibes. Now, George said he wanted to make Courage even scarier. How? By bringing him to life. Well, I don't blame Eustace for hating on this hound. 
Courage's inspiration comes from the manic world of Tex Avery, who's become famous for his wild animation and absurd gags. Those jaw-stretching screams look fine in cartoons, much less so when brought to the real world. George interpreted the dog's pink hue as smooth, naked skin, hence the absence of fur. Don't worry, Courage, we all experience balding sooner or later. Derogatory Dad if you like offensive humor disguised as irony, then have I got the show for you. Family Guy first hit our screens in the late 90s and seems to have been stuck there ever since. Like a lot of cartoons, creator Seth MacFarlane exaggerates his character's features for comedic effect. Take the two main characters, Peter and Lois here, each of which has some pretty noticeable features. So what would this couple look like in real life? Oh, oh boy. That intern has got the exaggerated part of Peter's size down. He looks like part man, part yoga ball. It's almost like looking at a younger, slimmer version of myself. Though the less we speak about the shape of his chin, the better. As for Lois, that's what I call a nosy neighbor. No wonder she has such a nasally voice. Her face is 50% nose. While the cartoon versions of these contentious characters allow them to get away with a lot of in-series antics, I'd be curious to see what a live-action version of the cartoon would look like. Although I'm sure the casting would be a nightmare. Town of Dead Rock If the 1960s animated sitcom about the modern Stone Age family, The Flintstones, taught me anything, it's that humans coexisted with dinosaurs and used them as everyday tools. From excavators to cars. Such big, dopey, docile creatures, happy to bend to any human's will. I mean, that's definitely not how it really happened, though. For a start, the dinosaurs were wiped out nearly 65 million years before early man first appeared. But if they were to coexist around the same time, what would that have looked like in the Flintstone Dinotopia? Shall we find out? Oh, George, what have you got for us? Wow, it seems less like Utopia and more like... Hell. Here we have the main character, Fred Flintstone, cowering and hiding from his fearsome pet dinosaur, Dino, who seems hungry. Okay, what's happened here? Well, in the cartoons, Dino is a Snorkosaurus. This is a totally made up breed of dinosaur that's meant to be akin to a dog. But Dino is also depicted as a meat eater, often drawn drooling over steaks and ribs. So it would only make sense then that if a Snorkosaurus was real, it'd be a bipedal carnivore like a raptor or a T-Rex. Oh man, the real life Flintstones is beginning to look more and more like a gruesome Jurassic Park prequel. Last Stitch Effort. Imagine getting a puppy, only for that puppy to end up being a destructive alien. I don't need to imagine it, I've seen Lilo and Stitch. Wait, you haven't? Okay, for the 12 of you who haven't seen Disney's magnum opus, the 2002 animated film follows Lilo, an eccentric Hawaiian girl who adopts Stitch, an extraterrestrial experiment. Subsequent hijinks ensue, good feelings abound. So, considering how cute Stitch looks, how has my intern ruined this for me? Let me look at his notes. Well, he may be vile, foul, and flawed. Oh, George, don't talk about yourself that way. <laughs> you were talking about the mid-journey Stitch. Well, in the film, Stitch resembled a weird dog, earning him a place in the pound when he landed on Earth. He then removed a set of his arms and started moving on all fours. Working with this, George used an image of a pug for his bulging black eyes and high-placed nose, then smushed it with a koala for the general structure of his face and leathery nose. All he had to do was paint it blue, and hey, presto, you got a realistic version of the Ohana-loving horror. Thanks, George, ruining yet another of my childhood memories. I'd duck your wages if I paid you anything. Be amazed. Wait, what? George? George? What are you playing at? Take this down, right now! This isn't funny. No, no, I don't care that technically I'm a cartoon. I don't want the world to see that side of me. George, let go of the mouse. So help me God, I will... Don't you dare hit upload! No! No! I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I promise I'll start paying you! Okay, yes, fine, fine. Real money this time. Just don't hit that button. What? A bonus? Well, I might be pushing it a bit too. No, George, no! Oh my god. Well, there you go. Now the world knows that behind this smooth white orbish cartoon avatar, I actually look like a sentient deflated balloon. Oh, my teeth. God, I really need to make a dental appointment. My bulging eyes? 
that's just what happens when you spend as much time as I do on the internet. God, it would have been less embarrassing to just do a face reveal. Well, <clears throat> which of these cartoons got your favorite reimagining? What other cartoons should get the realistic treatment? Also, I'm currently in the market for a new intern. Anyone interested? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.